Welcome, welcome, welcome once again to another beautiful Sunday here at the Hotspot Church. We want to say thank you so much for choosing to worship with us here once again. My name is Davina, and on behalf of our pastors, Andrew and Miley Tolina, we just want to welcome you and greet you in the name of Jesus. You guys could have been, you know, doing anything today, right? It's a beautiful sunny day. You guys could have chosen to um, have gone out to the park or to the lake or whatever and have a family day, family day, but yet you chose to tune in to get the word and to give God praise. Amen. And we don't take it lightly. We truly appreciate and love having you here at the Hotspot Church. Before we get, you know, um, before we continue on with our service today, just a friendly reminder for you guys to share today's worship experience because, you know, you never know. You never know what your your friends on Facebook may be going through or your family members. And you never know. Maybe God is like trying to talk to them. And while they're online, they scroll through and they see that you shared um, the Hotspot Church's service today. And maybe this is the word that they need. Maybe they've been asking God, you know, for... Um, clarification or maybe they've been asking God you know for for answers or directions and maybe it's in today's word and you never know all you have to do is hit that share button you don't need to write anything in the the post or anything you don't need to tag anyone if you don't want to right all you have to do is hit share that is it so I just want to remind you guys to hit that share button and invite others to join us today amen amen well here's what's happening right here at the hotspot church First off, we kicked off our relentless athletic program yesterday, amen. So this year, y'all, y'all are so lucky. See, our coaches know that we're coming out of our pandemic, right? We're coming out of it. We didn't really physically meet up last year. So they knew, man, maybe 10 weeks is a little bit too hard, too challenging. So they give y'all five weeks, okay? It's a five week program. Week one is already done. So man, we're just asking you to commit to four more weeks. Four more weeks, it happens on Saturdays at 10 a.m. at Meridian Middle School. It is free, it's a free program. And you know, yesterday um, I was talking with the coaches and we kind of were reminiscing on like the beginning stages, like this program has grown, right? Grown, like so much. I'm 30 and I participated in it when I was in seventh grade, okay? So that's how long this program has been around. But man, I've seen so much success come out of this program. And I know what's called Relentless Athletic Program, but I need you guys to get this, right? That we didn't see success just in the athletic, you know, department. I've seen success, you know, physically with health. I've seen success in the business world from people who have participated in this program. I've seen success in the classroom with these students. I've seen success, you know, in ministry with everyone that participated, and I've seen success in life and the reason being is i know it's called an athletic program but man i will never like coach tj and coach capono's voices are forever embedded in my head like anytime we are going you know doing an exercise or a drill and i was physically tired like i was ready to just be like i'm done i hear their voices come on come on like they're just pushing me right they're pushing me because they know it's all in your head right it's all it's a mindset and that's what they're training us for too they're not just training our bodies but they're training our mindset and get this it's based off of what we're learning here in church amen so man i just want to invite you guys to come on out relentless athletic program starting it started yesterday it's going to continue on this saturday at 10 a.m i better see y'all there all right at meridian middle school and then just come a little bit early too to register your kids as well amen amen also happening every friday is girlfriend friday and it's where our very own pastor miley takes the time out every single week to encourage us amen and i know it's called girlfriend friday but man you guys are more than welcome to check out her blog as well this past week um her blog was entitled what it means to edify and i really love this blog because you know it she just um brought a lot more clarification to that word edify but she also encouraged us to edify each other amen and i love that she said that it started with her parents right her parents at home um first were the ones to edify her and you know it all starts at home right amen it all starts at home so i want to encourage you guys to check it out if you haven't done so already and set a reminder right wake up friday you know get ready check out her blog right i get i promise you guys it is never longer than like a five minute read 
Amen. You guys can just read it, read it in the morning, let it just dwell in, in your spirit and, you know, send it to somebody. If, if you, it reminds you of something or someone, you know, maybe a situation they're going through, just send them the link, right? It's so simple. Askmy.com, right? Askmy.com. Simple as that. Amen. Amen. Simple reminder too, that there are no life groups happening this month, right? But it is, we're going into the last week of July. It's our week of prayer and worship and also fasting. And we just want to encourage you guys to join in with us um, as a corporate family, as a hotspot family on um, this week. You know, set some time aside to just worship together as a family. Set some time aside to do family prayer. And, you know, maybe whatever it is, maybe you fast one day out of this week or maybe three days or whatever it is that, you know, um, that God has placed in your spirit, man, do your fast and whatever it is that you're fasting for, continue to believe in it. Right. And that's the thing I love about prayer, worship and fasting. They all go together, right? They all go together. So we just want to encourage you guys to join along with us this, um, upcoming week as we just continue to give God all the praise and glory and honor that he alone deserves. Amen. Amen. And that's all of our announcements for today. It is the last Sunday of July. I can't believe how fast this year is going by. Amen. But we just also want to remind you guys to stay connected with us. If you guys, um, maybe you're tuning in a little bit late or, you know, um, you just want a reminder on all of our announcements, you can text the words hotspot news, all one word hotspot news to nine, seven, zero, zero, zero. You can follow us on social media. We're on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube. You can't miss us. We're called the Hotspot Church. And also you can visit our website at thehotspot.church. Now it's offering time. This is our opportunity to give unto the Lord. Amen. And you know, this week I was, um, actually yesterday I was thinking of the story of the boy with two fish um, and five loaves of bread. Amen. And I just love that story so much because it's just, it's, an example of how God can take what you have, multiply it, right? Fulfill a need and still bless you with an overflow. Amen. And that's, man, only God can do that, right? Only God can do that. So today, you know, as you're preparing your giving, there are multiple ways you can give. They're listed on the screen. As you're preparing your giving today, or maybe you gave throughout the week, just keep that as a reminder. Amen. That that little boy came, you know, and it wasn't much, right? People probably looked at him and I was thinking, what are you doing? But he gave cheerfully. He gave all that he could, right? All that he, he had met and God blessed them even more. So whatever it is that you're giving today, whatever your seeds are, man, give with a cheerful heart. And we're going to come together as a hotspot family and we're going to water our seeds. Amen. Father, we just want to continue to say thank you. Thank you for this opportunity that you've blessed us with to give today, Father Lord. <coughs> Excuse me. Father, we just continue to give cheerfully unto you, Father Lord. Lord, we know that you are the God that multiplies, that you can take whatever it is that we present to you, Father Lord, and you can just, man, make miracles happen, Father Lord. So whatever need um, the people may have today, Father Lord, as they're giving, Lord, we know that you're going to meet it. And you're not just going to meet it, but Father Lord, you're going to exceed all of our expectations, Father Lord, and we're just continuing to give you all the glory, honor, and praise for you. God, you are just so good. You are so good, and you always do more than we can ever think or imagine. We continue to give you all the glory, honor, and praise for just being the great God that you are. We love you so much, and if you believe in that prayer, repeat after me. Say, seed, go, and grow. Harvest. I will see you real soon. Time. Hurry up and catch up with my harvest in Jesus name. Amen. And amen. Hallelujah. Well, hotspot family, it is time to turn up the volume. It is time to get up on your feet, clap your hands, clear your throats, get your vocal cords ready because it's praise and worship time. Amen. It's our opportunity to just give God what belongs to him, right? He is a good God. He's a great God. And he is a God that is worthy to be praised. So join us today in worship and remember to rejoice always. Hallelujah. Good morning. Good morning, Hotspot family. Uh, we just want to thank you for joining us this morning. Um, I just want to go over a few things before we start our word. Um, 
So I just want to remind you um, that Relentless has started. Hey, represent. So make sure you come out. Um, I know Pastor TJ misses y'all. He misses people to yell at. He needs, you know, just go just so he can yell at you and get you right. All right. Uh, so it's Relentless every Saturday, 10 a.m. at Meridian Middle School. And then also for all our leaders and our staff, if you are head of the department and you are tuning in right now, please uh, take a screenshot or uh, jot this information down and please let your staff know that um, we have some leadership leadership sessions go happening right now. And so to stay up to date, for those of you that are not aware, we do have a text for all the leaders. Um, so text hotspot staff to 97000, okay? And just so you can stay up to date with everything that's going on with leadership. Um, and then lastly, you know, Davina mentioned it. This is the last week which we put on the side and we dedicate um, unto God as our, our week of prayer. We're, well, you should be praying every day, but we just wanna continue to remind you all, you know, try to come together as a family, um, pray together. Uh, worship together and um, and fast as well um, and you know like the worship song that was just playing that just says it all that man God when you're done please take all the glory it's none of us but just all of you and so continue to um, help and help your kids your family to uh, teach them about praying teach them about fasting you know this is the best time i i learned at a young age about preaching um <laughs> not preaching about uh praying and fasting um at a young age like no one said you know this is what we do they just opened their mouth and they just started praying they just opened their mouth and they just started worshiping and then you know when <laughs> when i'm sitting there and there's no food i'm like oh where's breakfast you know and then all of a sudden, like, oh, we're fasting. And then from there, like, what's fasting, you know? And so, you know, um, try to train your kids up and uh, teach them about God's word. Amen? Amen. All right. We're going to go right into it. And we're going to talk about um, the word of the week. So the word of the week for this week is recall. Recall. Recall means to bring a fact, event, or situation back into one's mind. Or another word is to remember. Uh, lamentations, it says, this um, I recall to my mind, therefore I have hope. It is through the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. Great is his faithfulness. You know, um, this I recall to my mind. Sometimes we forget on how good God is. You have to recall all those things of how if you're ever stuck in a situation, man, bring it back to memory. Recall on what God has done for you in the past and bring it into your situation today. Amen. All right. So we are going to go into our reading. Um, before I tell you the, our script, our uh, title, we're going to go ahead and read our story. And this is a familiar story, but... Um, I feel that God um, is trying to recall back to our memory on um, on his goodness and how he brought us through. Amen. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so it is found in Exodus chapter 14. Exodus chapter 14. I'm so happy because my hubby, we get to tag team today. Yeah, yeah. Okay, Exodus chapter 14 in the NIV, we're going to start at verse 5. And so just to um, let you know where we're going into, it says, um, I mean, not it says, but God sent Moses. Okay, this is the story of when God sent Moses to deliver his people because um, the Egyptians, Egyptians were mistreating the Israelites, which, which are God's people. And so, you know, um, what's his name? Moses should be for Pharaoh. And he's like, hey. Let my people go. And Pharaoh refused. And then after the plague, Pharaoh's like, okay, go. You know, take your people, go. Um, and he released them. So this is where we're left at. In Exodus chapter 14, verse 5 through 16, 
It says, when the king of Egypt was told that the people had fled, Pharaoh and his officials changed their minds about them and said, what have we done? We have let the Israelites go and have lost their service. That right there is so powerful. When you lose someone's service and it's like, dang, what did we just do, right? Okay, we lost their service. So he had his chariot made ready and took his army with him. He took 600 of the best chariots along with all the other chariots of Egypt with officers over all of them. The Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, so that he pursued the Israelites who were marching out boldly. The Egyptians, all, the Egyptians, all Pharaoh's horses and chariots, horsemen and troops, pursued the Israelites and overtook them as they camped by the sea near Pihahira, opposite Baal Zephon. As Pharaoh approached, the Israelites looked up, and there were the Egyptians marching after them. They were terrified and cried out to the Lord. They said to Moses, Was it because that there were no graves in Egypt that you brought us to the desert to die? What have you done to us by bringing us out of Egypt? Didn't we say to you in Egypt, Leave us alone. Leave us, let us serve the Egyptians. It would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the desert. Moses answered the people, do not be afraid. Stand firm and you will see the deliverance the Lord will bring you today. The Egyptians you see today, you will never see again. The Lord will fight for you. You need only to be still. Then the Lord said to Moses, why are you crying out to me? Tell the Israelites to what? Tell the Israelites to what? To move on. Raise your staff and stretch out your hand over the sea to divide the water so that the Israelites can go through the sea on not wet ground, not any kind of ground, not no muddy ground, but on dry ground. Amen? Man, so uh, last week, Pastor Mona, he spoke on trust God, right? And so today, we're going to add to that. Uh, we're going to add to that uh, in that trust God even when and what's going to happen is you're going to take that and you're going to complete the sentence. You're going to finish that. So Pastor Mona said trust God today we're saying even when and you're going to add to that that um, you're going to fill in the blank. You're going to add to that statement. Amen. So. We often overlook this story. We've seen the movie so many times, right? And we forget that um, what God can do when it seems like we're stuck in the toughest um, spot possible. We forgot that um, God's ways of delivering us is so different um, to what we're used to. Leaving uh, the Israelites, they were leaving familiarity of bondage to advance to the unknown. They were leaving what they were familiar with, the bondage, to leave, to move on to the unknown. There are people today that are like the Israelites, and we have been there too, where you are facing an impossible exit. You don't know whether to move forward because God said to move forward, but it's like, man, how can I move forward? You don't know, you don't want to move back because you're trying to be delivered from there but you're stuck in a situation where you are just in an impossible exit situation. Uh, don't overlook this story as though, man, I can't relate to that. Psh, who cares? No, we can all relate to this story. Check it out. In this story, remember, Pharaoh sent 600, 600 choice chariots. In other words, <coughs> 600 of his best chariots. You know what chariots were used for back in those days? They were used for warfare, they were used for racing, and they were used for hunting. They were used for warfare, racing, and hunting. Listen, what you are battling today, the 600 best chariots that the enemy is throwing at you with the warfare, you have to remember it is a spiritual warfare that's coming at you. 
that it is you may think it's the best chariots like man i i've never no it is the enemy's best chariots it is his his best um his best warfare that he thinks that he's about to win but man he's trying to get to you it's just a spiritual warfare the world um the the world may also be throwing at you this kind of chariot the racing chariot where our minds are constantly racing our minds are kind of, are constantly um at battle it's like i gotta get this done this done this done in due time i have to i want i want to um own a home by this age i want to be married and have kids by this age it's like all these things that are racing these are the kind of chariots that are that you're facing today they're racing through your mind and you're battling with the other um kind of chariot that the israelites face were the hunting um were chariots that were used for hunting man do you know that every day you have chariots that are hunting your faith they are hunting your faith, they are hunting your identity, and they are just hunting you down. Those are the kind of chariots. You think that those 600 chariots are nothing and are not relatable to you? No, man, this, this story is in here for, uh, for us. God is bringing back to, to memory. He's recalling all these things he did for us. He's like, man, you think you're going through something? You see these chariots that I sent? I know you're facing those chariots. I know you're facing warfare. You're you're facing all these races mentally, physically. You're uh you're facing all these chariots of being hunted down with your mindset, your ideas, your identity. Um and then uh, the the story continues to say to say not just the best uh chariots, but and all the chariots of Egypt with captains over each one with captains over each one okay so let's make it relatable you have chariots of people that are in command over you that's power tripping that's mistreating you they know you're a hard worker but they're just uh making all these demands and all these commands over you that is like of no more they have no moral value um another another um thing that the israelites faced was that we're facing today too is a pharaoh we all have pharaohs what's a pharaoh pharaoh he had um uh, his heart was hardened he had a hardened heart um we face people daily that lack care lack kindness lack good judgment you here you are um uh, like trying to be a christian but it's like man this pharaoh right here you know this this person that has no heart you're trying to live right but then you have those um hard those hardened heart people that just come your way and just kind of try to steer you off we all have pharaohs we all have those stubborn people that are trying to um catch you off amen and then uh the israelites what they also faced were Remember, they came across the water. There was a, uh, we all have these situations where there's something in front of us. And it seems like, man, that's the best way we can go, but we don't have the resources to get across. Uh, when you think of it back then, like with the Israelites, man, you know, they really could have used Noah's Ark back then. But they didn't have anything. They just had all these people and they were trying to get across the water. They didn't have anyone's yak to, to borrow. They couldn't just say, hey, can I borrow your boat? Can I just get all my people to get across? Nope, they didn't have that. They didn't have rafts waiting for them. They didn't have any floaties or any floating device. They didn't have that kind of thing. And sometimes we're stuck. Sometimes it's like, man, God, I know you told me to move on. I know you told me to advance. But how when I don't have the resources to move forward? How am I to do that? The Bible said that when the Israelites left Egypt, they marched boldly. They marched boldly because God's instruction and his word. But when they saw Pharaoh behind them, their boldness died. They cried out to God and they were stuck. Um, when I say that the people had had God's instruction, I, I love that um, God, he gave us the situation. He said, like, even though the Israelites were faced with this, 
but my people were left with two things. And those two things I want to encourage you or I want to remind you today that we have two is one of the things is we have God's instruction and God's instruction is to move on, to advance. You know, a lot of people, um, you know, when you're going through something and they're like, oh, okay, move on, or you still haven't moved on. And it's easy. It's easy said than done, right? It's easy for us people. But when God says to move on, when God says to advance, Man, you have to take heed on that. You have to just pick up on it and you just have to listen um, and be ready for it. And sometimes him training you um, to move on, it comes in little steps. For example, like uh, there is this one time in the beginning of the year when my boss had just, um, she just hired uh, my coworker then. And um, she, she was sick and she came in, she wasn't feeling good. And she was just about to pass out. And the Holy Spirit was like, go pray for her. And I was like, what? I was like, but I don't even know her. She just started, you know, and, and I'm having like this 15 minute battle in my head. And you know what the Holy Spirit, he reminded me of this sermon that I was watching. And it's like, God was saying, really? Really? We're still here? We're still here to where you have to question when I say something or when I ask you to, to do something small as a prayer. You're still stuck at what if they reject me? You're still stuck at thinking about what's going to happen or what she's going to think. We're still here. For some of you, you're still stuck there. So God is saying like, we're still here in the kitty situation. I need you to go from faith to faith, but you're still stuck here. We're still here. And so... Um, when God, like, when he quickened that in my spirit, like, man, you're still here, Doc. Then I was like, dang it. Okay. I eventually got up after 15 minutes of battling in my head. I was like, I don't want to do that. I got up and I, you know, I prayed and she's like, man, thank you so much. And I was so at peace. But at the same time, I was down on myself like, man, Doc, you're still there. You're still like cautious about asking people if you can pray for them. And the other thing that um, God had to remind me or he had to check me with was I am a night person, you know, like I am very much a night person. I will do, I will stay up all night to the early morning, but I won't do morning things. Like I'd rather sleep in. And so I do, when I do devotions, I do my devotions like at nighttime before I go to sleep. But God, he's like, you know what, this year we're going to do morning sessions. You know, we're going to have, um, we're going to have devotion time in the mornings. And so, y'all, I had to set my alarm at five o'clock. While this guy is snoring away, my alarm is set at five o'clock every morning. Worship, devotion, prayer, and just talking to God. Five o'clock. And I was like, man. And then I got used to it. I was like, man, I like this. I like this. And then there came a time where I started waking up at four. And I was like, man, are you kidding me? I just have one more hour to my devotion. It's not even time. And so, um, so I tried to force myself to sleep. And then it happened the next day. I woke up at four. And I was like, man, God, seriously? We're going to have to set my alarm at four now? And then the next, the third day, I didn't set my alarm. But it was sure enough, I woke up at four. So I started changing my, my schedule, my alarm to four o'clock. And so from four o'clock, uh, from five o'clock, it changed to four. From four o'clock, it changed and it changed. And the thing that God was trying to say is like, man, don't ever box me in. Don't ever lock me in to just, just a certain time in your day. When, whenever I'm ready to speak to you, you have to be ready. And so it, it's at that moment where I was like, man, okay, I'm going to make my schedule available. Whatever time you say, wake up and talk. Let's talk. Let's do this. And so I was ready. And so it's in those little things that you have to prepare yourself and you have to make yourself spiritually aware or make sure that you are listening and ready for when God says to move on. Because I know we're all ready to advance, right? We're all ready for, um, to just move on from where we are at. And so in order for us to move on, we've got to get that go from God and you have to be ready. Amen. And so I'm going to talk about um, the other thing that they had, uh, which is his word, but I'll come back to that. <laughs> no, uh, just to add on to uh, 
kind of what Daph was talking about with uh, <clears throat> how they march boldly out of Egypt, right? Um, isn't it funny that we can march boldly when God requires nothing of us, yep. right? Um, because he didn't ask anything but for them to leave, you know? Um, he didn't ask them to do anything. Moses, he, he instructed Moses to do everything. But it was easy for them when no one was after them to march out boldly. But your, your faith and your character is tested when you are now between the sea and the Pharaoh's army, right? Um, so, when, so when now, like Daph was saying, when, when they're being attacked and now they have nowhere to go because the sea is in front of them, now it's like, what do we do? And then you see, like Daph was saying, that their boldness went away, right? Yeah. Then they started to cry out, right? Um, but it's just like us, in our, you know, it's easy for us to march boldly in God, to march boldly, to stand in our belief, to stand in our faith when there's nothing um, needed of us. But like that, how God was testing her and saying, go pray for that person. Now she's being tested, right? Now she's being asked to do something. And, and, and the thing I love about God um, and that I've learned over the years is that following God is a series of steps of faith. It's just not one step. It's a series of steps. Um, it don't matter what level of faith you are at or what um, where you are in your walk. There will always be a time where you have to take a step of faith again, right? So I've learned that it, that that walking with God is a series of steps of faith. It's a series of tests to further your faith. Um, even if you look at Jesus' life, right? Jesus was tested many times in the Bible. He was not only tested by the devil, but he was also tested by the Pharisees. You know, they always wanted to see, oh, oh are you allowed to, to heal on the Sabbath day? You know, he was tested constantly. Um, but the thing about Jesus is, he looked at these tests not like how we look at tests, right? Because the problem with, with, with us and the problem sometimes, right, is that sometimes when we think about our faith being tested, we tend to think of it as a bad thing. Amen? Right? We look at tests as a bad thing. Um, we always think of being tested at, uh, and it always has a negative connotation to it, right? Um, especially when it comes to... to uh, God, right? Test with God. It's always in our minds. Sometimes it's always a negative thing. And why is that? It's because it's always an uncomfortable situation, right? It's always, um, there's always uncertainty, like, because God doesn't always give us the full instruction. Sometimes he, he, sometimes he just tells us to go to advance, right? Um, and, and, and sometimes there's this feeling of hopelessness. And I know none of us like feeling hopeless, right? But but God sometimes puts us in those situations, right? So no one likes being tested because we don't like these feelings, right? But I, you know, I want to tell you today that being tested is a blessing, right? I cannot tell you how many times that I've been tested, how many times that uh, we had to go through some stuff. But then in the in the moment, man, we we hated it. We we had to be um, pushed. We had to be stretched, right? But it wasn't until after that you realized, man. God was just trying to get me to this blessing over here, right? So I think if we if we can look at tests as blessings, it's it'll be so much easier to trust trust God when, right? Um, and and you know it's how this title because we knew we were gonna add on to Pastor Mona's series, um, Pastor Mona's uh, lesson of uh, trust God, right? But I um, when me and Daph was talking last night. And I was telling her, man, um, trust God when you cannot trust God, right? Trust God when you, when you, when you feel like you can't, right? Um, and, and, and that's crazy. Can, can you imagine that? Like, man, to trust God even when you cannot trust him, right? That's the kind of situations we put in sometimes, right? God will place you in a position where you have to put your trust in him. You have to, right? And that's the same thing that's going on with the Israelites right now, right? Um, 
we've we've all heard the saying um, stuck between a rock and a hard place, right? And the, and and what the Israelites are in right now, that's that they're stuck between the Pharaoh's army and the um, the sea, right? Um, but it, it it's more than that for them, right? They're stuck between the unknown of the future and being a slave to their past, right? Um, and this is where they're stuck in. But, you know, the thing is, in this position, daddy cannot help you, mommy cannot help you, um, auntie and uncle cannot help you, your best friends cannot help you, pastor cannot help you in these situations, right? And the only thing you're left with is throwing a prayer up to God. And that's kind of where um, the Israelites are, right? All you have in the situation at hand is the gap between your rock and your hard place. And this gap is getting smaller and smaller and smaller, right? Because they're advancing towards you. And, and, I, lo and I love that, right? God is allowing the army or your problems to advance on you so that you can advance forward. He's trying to push you out of your stuck place, right? Um, but in this desperate and hopeless situation, right, I'm here, I'm here to tell you that you need to start seeing your test as a blessing. And I guarantee you it'll make all the difference, right? Trust God even when, right? Trust God even when, right? And then I want to focus on this one, uh, this one scripture, okay? Exodus 14, 16, right? Exodus 14, 16, and I'll reread it, right? God tells Moses to raise your staff and stretch out your hand over the sea to divide the water so that the Israelites can go through the sea on dry ground. Raise your staff and stretch out your hand over the sea, right? The problem in front of you, check this out, the problem in front of you was made to drown the problem behind you. The problem in front of you was made to drown the problem in fr um, behind you. And I'll give you a perfect example, right? For a long time, I struggled with finances, right? So I have my bills, everything that I need to pay that's behind me, chasing me down. And then in front of me, not only with the check that I have for working at my job, I got to pay my bills, but then I got to do spiritual matters. So in front of me is the ties, the, the free wills, the, the, the uh, first fruits, right? So now it's, it's all this stuff is money going out, no money coming in, right? But the thing was that the test that was in front of me, which is my tithes, being faithful to my tithes, being faithful to my first fruits, being able to give, right? The test that was in front of me eventually drowned my, my bills. It eventually drowned all the problems that was chasing, my financial problems that was chasing me from behind. But it wasn't. I had to go through the, the tithing. I had to go through the first roots. I had to do these things, right? Before God could drown my problems, right? The problem in front of you was made to drown the problem behind you, okay? Um, there's, and, and, and the thing, right, is there's this misconception that because God is a loving God, because God is love, that God is a God of rainbows and butterflies. But that's not who God is, right? The type of God, the type of God we serve, right? Um, that I serve is um, we. Well, the type of God we want is the type of God that when we give our lives, we will have no more struggles, right? That's the type of God we want. But the the type of God that He really is is He's always going to test you to bless you, right? There's always going to be something that's going to test your faith. And then at the end of all this thing, you will be blessed, right? He's a God that will find you in your mess and bring you out so you can march boldly. Amen. Um, he's a God that's going to tell you it's time to watch this like this, like his uh, instructions to Moses. It's time to raise some things in your life. It's time for you to be stretched, stretched, right? He told Moses to raise your staff. And stretch out your hand over the sea, right? Um, you know what's crazy about this whole situation, right? Is that God's instructions to Moses was putting Moses in the position of worship. Stretch out your hands 
it lifts up your staff. Right? But the, and, and this is one thing that the Holy Spirit was showing me, right? Is that we treat God like the staff. Because what is a staff used for? It's something to lean on. It's something that supports us when we're walking. And that's all we do with God. It's just, man, God, let me lean on you. Let me, uh, I want you to support me constantly. But here's the thing, right? God is saying, no, put me over your head. Put me in the position where I belong, which is over you. And when you put God over you, now you're in the position of worship. And I guarantee you that any problem lies before you or that lies behind you, when you're in a position of worship, those things will just go away. Amen? God is instructing you and putting you in a position of worship. Any test that comes your way is just a test to see where your worship is going to lie. Are you going to worship your problems? Or are you going to worship the God in front of you? Lift, raise your staff, and stretch out your hands. Amen? Oh, she's tardy. she's tardy right now. <laughs> Amen. Amen. That's good. That's good. Amen. So, man, trust God even when, even when there's 600 best chariots, even when there's Pharaoh, there's the hardened hearts, even when there's water in front of you and you have no resources. Man, advance, move on. Um, one thing that I going to close with is that with all that the Israelites were facing that were behind them and in front of them um, they had two things going for them um, and one thing we already talked about is that they already had God's instruction was to which was to move on or to advance right and the other thing that they had was his word what was his word um, when when God approached Moses to deliver his people, right? Um, he said, hey, I, I have a task for you. You need to let my people go. And Moses, he had a stuttering situation. And he said, well, what if the people ask, you know, who are you to come and deliver us? And Moses, um, and God told him, tell them I am. Tell them I am. So they had god's instruction which was to move on to advance right and then they had his word what was his word i am i am with you i am with you you see the reason why that is so powerful is that they all came from the same place they they're all going to the same place but they each had their own battles just like me and you today We've all come from um, our, our place of Egypt. We've all come, we've all had our place of Egypt and we're all going forward. We're all trying to move on and we're stuck. And when we're stuck, we forget that we have God's word, which is I am his promise, which is I am. See, we all have different battles that we're facing, just like the Israelites. What were they facing besides all that? Listen, there were women and um, there were couples there that had every time they had a boy, maybe a, a woman that had her had already three sons and they were thrown into the Nile because any time they gave birth to a boy, they were thrown into a Nile. Um, uh, there were people that were facing abuse mentally because of all that um, the whipping. They had to meet a quota. And if they didn't meet that quota, the harsher the Egyptians were. Um, some people were abused physically, right? And so they have all these ish, these situations, just like we have all these situations. And the reason why that statement is so powerful, and and where and the place where they're about to go is, God has to make you understand that I am with you. Meaning, everyone that is streaming in right now, we are all face, facing a different situation. And this is what makes God God. He is the only God that can make one million people in one seating change a situation because he is the great I am. Meaning the God that I need today, I don't need money, God, but I need your comfort. I need your love. You see, God could have, God, when Moses said, who am I going to say? 
Who am I going to say um, sent me? They could have said, God could have said, say that God the deliverer sent you. You know, but then there, there are women there like, I don't want a God that delivers. I need a God that heals. And that's why God said, tell them I am sent them. Because the, the, the God that Davina needs today, I don't need that God today, but I may need him tomorrow. The God that you need today is not the same God that I need. You see, because we're all going through something different. We're all battling different situations. And you have to understand that we came from the same place. We're going to the same place, but you are serving the great I am. That whatever you need, you have the God that is going to fulfill that need today. That everyone that is streaming in, that is just tuned in to this and receiving this word, that everyone needs a different part of God. And he is the only and the great I am. That whatever you need from God, he is that God that you need today. And that's why he said, I am. I am. Every day you wake up, I always thank God. Like, man, God, I thank you that you are the great I am. I don't know what kind of God I'm going to need today, but I know I'm going to need you, the great I am. Mm -hmm. Because whatever you face, man, look, there are people out there, they don't need finances. Mm -hmm. They just need love. Mm -hmm. They just need a smile. They just need a simple hey how are you and then there are people out there i don't need all the money in the world but can you just can you can i just need some groceries today i just need to feed my kids today and then there are those kind of people that i have all the money in the world and i just i i need something i need guidance i need a mentor i need someone to help me you know who that someone is that someone is you that can introduce them to the great i am Man, we serve a mighty God. Yeah. And that's why the great I am, he is that God that will put you in a situation that, that will make you lift your hands, lift up your staff, as Marcus was saying, and just worship. And that is why I love to worship God. And because he is the God that there are so many testimonies, and I've shared this with, with certain people. Like There's so many testimonies that I want to share that I can't even share because of the fragile and the and the darkness that it holds but if you only knew the kind of God that I serve that he is the great I am that he really is a deliverer that whatever you're going through he can do it for you he has done it for me he's continually doing it for me and he will continue to do it for you for me and I know that he can do the same thing for you and all you have to do is believe and receive and understand and know and confess that he is the great I am. Yeah. You have to know that he is the great I am. That no matter what you're going through, trust God even when, and you feel that, you finish that phrase. No matter what you're going through, trust God even when. We're all going to go through different seasons. Trust God even when, and you finish that. You finish that. You finish that statement but you allow God to complete what he set out to do. And so if you've never received Christ in your heart or in your life, I just want to offer him that he is really the best thing that happened to me. He really is. There is nothing in this world that I love more than God. And that, um, and I know that Marcus, he can never outdo God. He can never love me the way God loves me. He can never understand me the way God understands me. And so I want to offer this Christ. If you've never accepted him, all you have to do is just say, Jesus, come into my life. I receive you today. I confess that you died and that you rose again. And I thank you for the gift of the Holy Spirit. And I thank you for reminding me that you are the great I am. So whatever you need, he is that. And we come into agreement and we say amen. Amen and amen and amen. And so I just, I just want you to know, uh, we want you to know that we serve a living God. He's done it in the past. There is nothing that we cannot relate in the Bible. The chariots are not old. We are facing chariots of today. 
we're facing the same problems and we're facing the same God, the same I am. And so we just continue to bless you um, and have a grateful, <laughs> joyful day, as Davina would always say. Uh, choose to rejoice always. And so um, don't forget, this is the week of prayer, worship, and fasting. Um, and then leaders, please text hotspot staff to 97000. Man, let's, let's, let's grow let's, together. Yes. Let's advance. Let's move on um, so that our kids can grow up and move on. And then Relentless is Saturday, 10 a.m. All right. We love you all. And we continue to pray for our building because it's coming. Because remember, we serve the great I am. All right. Love you all.